the idea of demonstrations and being out on the streets what do you what do you see the merits of them and what, what's what's the long game here well what do you what do you think in terms of and the, the merit is, is expressing the point of view in a public domain in such a way uh this makes the we know that uh, the the main characteristic of, of a uh, of a living ummah which is uh, praised uh, in the quran but uh, those who when we establish them on earth those when we establish them on earth, they establish prayer, meaning the system of prayer. Life is around prayer, timing, table, uh, even even dates, etc. Are all structured around prayer. And out of zakat, not pay zakat, pay zakat that you can do individually. Out of zakat, handing it over to the authority, taking care of it, distributing it, and so on, which is very substantive. Zakat, by the way, as we all know. Just a quick remark for those who do not know what, because it has been mutilated also through uh, the fiqh of dark ages, is that it's a two half percent of the capital of the assets. But if you look for a take for example, the United States of America, the total assets of the of that nation may be easily over a hundred trillion dollars. Two and a half percent is two and a half trillion. Imagine that yearly, two and a half trillion. It's both an incentive to let the money work and produce more and more so that um, so that the assets will not disappear by, by taken into zakat. And also, you see the amount is very substantive. And there are other incomes for the Islamic State, not only zakat, but zakat is as substantive as could you imagine. Because usually in the classical fiqh books, it's present, it's present in such a way that looks very trivial, unfortunately, because it has not been followed after the time of Rashidin and developed further. <coughs> Uh, as it should have been developed, because it depends upon the state and how it collects and how it develops further. Anyway, that's and then Amar ibn Auf and Abu Al-Munkad was who command good and forbid evil, which means essentially accounting the rulers. That's the essential meaning of God. And this is in our book, Muhasabat al-Hukam, it's clearly explained that uh, the majority, maybe all, but let's say the majority to be conservative of uh, of the hadith about commanding good and forbidden evil, actually related commanding and forbidding, uh, forbidding evil from the ruler side, commanding the rulers and forbidding the rulers, not uh, the common people, not the single people. Also, that's definitely part of commanding good and forbidding evil, commanding everyone. You command everyone, single persons, organization, groups, but the most, most important things is the rulers and the one in authority and in charge. Uh, and this is clear from the hadith in our book, Muhasabat al Hukam. Actually, the famous hadith that everyone knows and memorize is that from Abu Sa'id al Khudri that uh, whoever from you see a munkar, he should change it with his hand. And uh, if he cannot, who doesn't have the ability to do that, which is needs of further expansion and details, what is the meaning of ability, what are the limitations, etc., then he has to do it with his tongue. Now, what is the meaning of his tongue? You have to confront the ruler or tell the people around you. And one of the best ways, to express what you really think about the rulers or what's going on is to have it in a demonstration. Because demonstration usually people moving together to the target and shouting there with, with their demands or gathering in a place, being rallied in that place, and then someone give a speech and uh, brings the issues he wants to criticize and the issues he is demanding. It's commanding good and forbidding evil. And the third stage, if you cannot do that, whatever reason, legitimate reason, then you have to change the munkar by, by your heart. What's meaning what? Changing by your heart, you have to recognize it as a munkar, you have to hate it as a munkar, and compliance with Allah Subhanahu said about the believer that Allah made them hate the kufr, the fusuq, and the asyan. They hate kufr, they hate fusuq, rebellion against Allah. They hate disobedience to Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala. So that's it. Now, even this famous hadith, which is essentially the master hadith, which is usually quoted everywhere, and the people discuss the limitation, uh, rightly or wrongly, the limitation for exchanging uh, uh, commanding good and forbidding evil by hand and by tongue and by etc. <laughs> uh, the, the the hadith is actually, if it is if, if it is uh, followed in all channels of narration, in its fullest nar narrative, is actually commanding the rulers and or prohibiting the rulers. So it's again about the rulers, not about single person or someone sitting on a table and drinking khamar, things like that, that most unfortunately scholarly work focus on. Uh, some of them even went to such extreme like destroying music instruments and things that which is nonsensical. Let's just, just to clarify that point.
So uh, uh, now uh, changing with hand is a very complex issue. And it requires sometimes certain authority, it requires sometimes an emergency situation. Like for example, if you see someone is about to abduct a woman and take her in a car, for example, it's very clear that abducting a woman would end either that woman being being taken as a ransom or being raped. So this is a munkar. You, and you can prevent it by, by, by using your hand by force, like for example, by blocking the road or by pulling a gun and shooting at the man or threatening him with a gun or something like that, then you have to do it. That's a situation where interfering with the hand prevents the munkar from happening. But not if the munkar has already happened, like somehow you, you find someone committing zina, then you have to find the number, say number of uh, witnesses and then file a case against him so he can be tried appropriately. That munkar has happened. That's not, that's not changing the munkar. The munkar has happened is a punishment. So establishing hudud is not part of commanding good, commanding evil, in contradistinction to some, some scholar claimed that establishing hudud is part of commanding good, well, is not. That is the state authority uh, to, uh, to punish and reward for uh, the proper behavior in the society, with, which, uh, for these things which fall within its authority. Because not, it, not, not everything which is maybe disobedience to Allah falls within the authority of the state and matter of punishment and so on. That or the area of hudud and so on needs a much more uh, elaboration, expansion, uh, much better than what the classical scholars unfortunately have done. But that's not our issue today. Now, changing with the tongue, meaning expressing. That is monkar, we don't want that. And the best way to express it, express it, not a single person, in a group. So if you can rally a group of people and march towards maybe the central government palace or to a central park, where, for example, representative of the authorities or representative of the public or the media are present, and you express the condemnation for the munkar and criticism with the evidences and so on, or demand certain demands, which is ma'roof. That's what, obviously, uh, using the tongue in the appropriate way. It can't be that just you go in a locked room and close the door and say, I hate this munkar, I hate this munkar. doesn't make any, that's not changing with your mouth. Changing with your mouth, meaning doing something which may, well, according to the best probability, change that munkar. And that can be most efficiently done if it is done in a community instead of single person, and then in formal demonstration, and then in a concentrated way. So that's, that's a, so no need to refer to the evidence of uh, uh, Hamza and Omar coming out of the Darul Arqam, marching toward the Kaaba in a demonstration. We don't need that. That's, uh, that you march and you, uh, that you uh, shout, that you complain, that you express yourself, all this is permissible. Now, what are the what is the most efficient way of of uh, of uh, commanding of uh, 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 commanding the good and forbidding the evil with the tongue? You know, because the, the one with the hand is not feasible or not accessible in that situation. The best way is obviously to do it in big numbers in an organized way during an, a process like a march or a gathering in a, in a public place. That's exactly what demonstration is all about. They are well, they, one way to express things forcefully and showing that uh, the expression is not only a single person or a single man or a single woman. It's actually a whole community or a considerable section of, of, of the community, especially the most active ones of them, are coming and expressing themselves clearly. <clears throat> to enforce their point of view and make it public and make the public aware about it and possibly even persuade the public to accept that point of view. Look, for example, at this LGBT and their so-called, uh, what they call Pride Day. They demonstrate for evil. Why? Because they want to show that they regard that as legitimate and nice and the society is supposed to be accepting that. And with this way, they can make it like, acceptable and it becomes like commonplace. By repeating that, and many Muslim countries, like for Turkey, some one Turkish brother told me that because the constitution was a secular one, has been written by military in the 60s, which is extremely anti Islamic, that constitution specifically, the people when they demonstrate benefiting from, from the protection of the constitution, the people in the state spit at them. That's that's uh, that's the, the maximum they can do, and they're doing the right thing this way, diffusing their attraction to the general public that this is perfectly fine to be uh, to, to be involved in sodomy and debauchery, etc. So demonstrating, marching is an essential tool and uh, methodology of uh, co uh, commanding good and forbidding evil with the tongue and making it really efficient and, and, uh, and strong. 
obviously there are other tools and ways for example writing in the media using a youtube and so on but all these new means are actually new but the way going walking demonstrating gathering in one place is evidently available since ancient time in certain times in the past maybe that was the only way where the whole community can demonstrate their uh, and express their con condemnation for evil and demand for for good and for for ma'ruf. So, but now we have added a few sets of that. So, in, in addition to that, but this remains is and still remains an essential uh, methodology of of uh, com commanding good and forbidding evil with the tongue. And, uh, it, 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 and these demonstrations and these gathering and marches, they are obviously covered, especially if they are bigger and bigger, they're covered by the media. And this will give us further platform besides the physical platform where they are present, the coverage of the media, and the, the uh, spreading what they're saying in the word of mouth, and the calling for another one will make it even stronger and more effective. So that's that's uh, concerning uh, this issue of uh, of uh, so there's no need of uh, of uh, of really to to refer to the story of Hamza and, and Omar. No need for that. It's the fundamental principle, not only uh, sanction that, but also dictate that in that direction. But obviously, these madkhali, as you said, they are munafiq kafir. They are not Muslims, and they are just Asian. And uh, uh, to see that they are kafir, have not through Islam, is that they believe and allow, and possibly even participate, in spying on the people. While spying in Islam is strictly prohibited, absolutely, except spying on the enemy at war. That's all. That's the only exception. There's no other exception whatsoever, as far as I know from the from Quran and Sunnah, overwhelming evidences. There's no way you can spy on other Muslims or spy anybody uh, except on the enemy at war. That's all. That's the only one. That's the only permissibility of spying. And this is part of the acts of war because you are obviously uh, you are, you are spying on an enemy at war. That's in state of war, not even a case, case of ceasefire and peace. Not, uh, not even in that, that war because you are in the state of war. You are allowed and you have the authority to kill him. So a fortiori you have also the authority to spy on him and find all weak points so you can get to him and defeat him and eliminate him if necessary. So that's uh, so these people are indulged. Most of them are employed by intelligence services. So this shows clearly that they are uh, regarding spying on, on the Ummah as permissible. And this is clearly uh, a belief which takes you out of the fold of Islam. That's definitely uh, through all Islamic history, no, 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 no Muslim since the time of Sahaba until now, until very recently, has ever sanctioned that uh, that you spy on, on other Muslims and bring the information to authority. There was no license for that and no no permission to do that whatsoever, ever. 